Hey everybody, Shelly here. I thought I would take you through the thought process that goes through my mind when I'm doing a more formal painting. So you're going to see that I started off with an underpainting. That was two colors of oil paints. I used a transparent oxide red mixed with a little bit of Viridian green just to kind of tone down the redness of that um, transparent oxide red and gave me this nice brownish color for the underpainting. And the reason that I like to start with an underpainting, especially on something so big, is that I can really focus on composition and value. So with the underpainting, it's really like drawing with oil paint and I uh, put down a thin layer of walnut oil and then it's just oil paint on top of that and it's easily uh, wiped off. So if I put something down and I could just play with the composition, I can just wipe it away if I don't like it and then try something new. It's a really easy way to experiment with your composition and your value patterns without being married to it or having to do sketches or other things like that. I really just like thinking and working it out all on the actual canvas. So that's my initial um, starting point is the underpainting. This is going to be a two-part video. Today I'm going to talk to you about the starting process and how I go about thinking about what I'm going to be doing in the beginning of a more formal painting. And then in part two, I'm going to mix up my flesh tones and begin painting the portraits. There's going to be three portraits of these cowboys. And you can see that all happening in part two. In this underpainting, I went ahead and divided my canvas into equal parts. And then I'm doing more of an oil sketch, really. Um, I think if you've seen any of my underpainting videos in the past, you'll see sometimes I cover the entire canvas with paint and then I start painting into that and wiping away the lighter areas. Um, with this one, I just was in the mood to do more of a drawing type sketch. So that's what you see happening here. And then after that dries, I go ahead and paint in the background. And then the next thing I like to think about is the background. So the underpainting had dried and I went ahead and started playing with some of the color in the underpainting. And the background is this really light gray, really washed out, um, weathered wood. And I wanted it to come across as a bit abstract, but yet still for the viewer to understand that it's wood. So that's a fine line. So I went ahead and put down some of the colors in an abstract way that's gonna convey the correct color in the background. And you see that here. Now, as I progress the painting, I may adjust the background as far as value or maybe a little detail here or there. But for the most part, it's gonna set the tone for the figures in the painting. And then, so I like to kind of think about color and texture in my backgrounds. So with this painting, I thought that I would like to keep the figures in a more realistic, maybe a more uh, finished degree of painting. So to balance that, high level of detail out, I'm thinking that I want to take my background into a more um, rough textured, very um, brush stroke, just really rid um, lots of texture and ridges and, and I want it to be rough in the background. And also, since these are cowboys, <laughs> they're kind of rough, but the way that I want to paint them doesn't necessarily have to show so much roughness. Maybe it will, <laughs> we'll see. But I really wanted to have that conveyed in the texture of the background. So I'm always thinking about once the underpainting is done, I like to work from the background forward. 
So then I'm thinking, well, is the background gonna have a lot of texture? What's the color gonna be? And then the other thing to think about also is what time of day is it in your scene? So this is like a midday sunlight out. It could be a little overcast because they do have a lot of mud on their boots. So more than likely, it's probably been raining because it's muddy. So there's not gonna be bright sunlight, but it is daylight, it's not night. So there's gonna be that um, type of light being cast into the story. And with that, then the next thing I did was I went ahead and painted the background. So I kept all those things in mind, put down some initial colors and kind of set the scene up so that when I'm painting the figures, I cannot worry about staying in the lines. <laughs> I really don't like to have to worry about um, staying in lines and not, you know, I wanna be able to be free when I'm painting and not worry about some of my brush strokes going into that background. So I believe that a really good painting is gonna have a variety of edges and this is gonna allow me to have some nice, hard, tight edges, but also take some of the brush strokes right off into the background and then not have to worry about bringing the background back into it, which sometimes is okay. But for the most part, I thought I'd have the background done and then pull these figures right on into it. So after painting the background, before I continue forward, I like to sit back Look at my reference image that I composited and I'm going to show you a picture of that here. And you can see I've got the three figures and what I like to think about is their skin tone next. So I'm going to mix the skin tones and then paint some of the flesh colors in. And I like to do that so that I can play the clothing colors off of the skin colors. So maybe perhaps if there's a lot of red in the face of one of the cowboys, then I can balance out that redness with a little bit more blue or some gray or neutral tone in the clothing to kind of balance that out. So not only in the next step is thinking about the flesh tone, the skin tone, is thinking about color patterns. So in the reference photo, you can see that their shirts are mid value to light value and I'm gonna keep them pretty neutral. Now this middle guy, he's got this pretty bright blue and white checkered shirt. I think that's too bright. I wanna to tone it down. I like the pattern, but I don't like the brightness and I don't like the contrast between the dark blue checks and the white checks. So I'm going to kind of darken the white part of the shirt, lighten the dark part of the shirt and just kind of make that a little more subtle. But I think having that checkered pattern here will be interesting. So you've got striped pant, a little bit more visible striped pant, and then he's got a subtly striped shirt. But both of these figures have that paisley style vest. So you've got some really great color patterns, dark boot in the center. And then these guys are actually wearing similar boots. I'm gonna paint his different though in the actual painting, but I'm gonna keep the values the same as in the reference. So you've got light boot, light boot, dark boot in the middle. So, and then the hats, you've got dark hat, mid value hat, light hat. Uh, once I see that done, if I need to adjust it, I may, but I think his light hat will be similar in value to his lighter shirt. So you'll have that balancing there with the lighter boot. I think his boots will be a little bit lighter. So you have light 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 so you want that triangular positioning of your lightest values and then we'll see about the positioning of our mid values and then we're going to try to space out our darkest dark so everything's balanced as far as light middle and dark values so that's the thought process that helps set up the whole painting and um, the next thing is to make it happen so I'm gonna shut here and go and mix flesh tones and then we'll start painting the first portrait. I think I'm gonna start with this guy and then work my way across. Yeah, probably. Well, I don't know, I might change my mind. <laughs> it's hard to say. But you're gonna see um, each of the portraits because there'll be three different portraits for each cowboy and there's some nice hands that we're gonna be painting and I think uh, you'll enjoy seeing that happen. 
All right, guys, let's paint. Thank you. 